Okay, in this problem, we're looking at an object that is moving along a straight line. And there is a, an, an equation of motion, and that's given by S equals T cubed minus 3T. So S is the position of this moving particle, the particle that goes forwards and backwards along a straight line. S is measured in meters and t is measured in seconds. We're, we're going to find the velocity and the acceleration as a function of t. Well, the velocity equals the derivative of the position function. So V of T is equal to S prime of T. And we look above of what S is, and I can maybe highlight that. All right, that's S. So I'm taking the derivative and I use the power rule. So I look at T to the third, I bring the three in front and I write down T and then for the power I take the power of three and subtract one and now I have two. That's the power rule minus for the next term I minus I subtract three and then the derivative of t is one and there's 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 the velocity function and then I move on to the next part which is to find the acceleration so, so let me even highlight that um, as, as my answer now for the next part I'm going to write down that acceleration is the rate of change of the velocity and therefore rate of change is because rate of change is derivative acceleration is the derivative of velocity derivative is rate of change and the rate of change of the position is the velocity the rate of change of velocity is acceleration all right, so that I have A of T equals the derivative of V, and I use the power rule. I have, I write down three, and then for T squared, that derivative is 2T. Then the derivative of three is zero, so that gives 6T. And that's my formula for acceleration. I like that. Alrighty, now we find the acceleration after two seconds. So after two seconds, I have A of two is six times two, which is 12. The, the units for acceleration are meters per second squared. I could do that up here actually. Maybe I should for velocity and acceleration. So velocity, it's a rate of change, velocity is a rate of change of position to time. And so the units here will be meters per second. The acceleration is rate of change of, of, of velocity to time. So that's going to be meters per second per second, which makes meters per second squared. All right, then I go on to part C and part C says, Find the acceleration when the velocity is zero. So that's going to require us to answer the question, when is velocity zero? And by the way, what does it mean for the velocity to be zero? What's going on is that there is a direction where this object's moving along the straight line, which is the positive direction, and there is the opposite way along the straight line will be the negative direction. So the velocity, when the, if, so what's happening is you have a positive velocity and then it changes direction. So the velocity, this is continuous. So the velocity is positive, but it decreases to zero and then it, it becomes zero and then the velocity becomes negative. It's zero at that point. So it's a change of direction. It could be that 
the velocity is positive and it comes to zero, you know, like instantly or for an instant a stop and then continues to grow again, to become positive again. But it could be that it's going positive to negative and it's zero. So it goes from forward to backwards, changing direction. So um, I'm going to write down the V of when's the velocity zero and V of T is equal to zero. So I'll have 3T squared minus 3 equals zero because that's our formula above for velocity. And I have 3T squared equals 3. So I have T squared equals 1. And then I can write T equals plus or minus 1. But uh, I think that this problem is implying that we start at time zero, we're moving forward. So therefore, I'm just going to look at T equals 1 second. There, there might be some... Um, situations where the zero point is just the, the, the object's been moving you know for a thousand years and we we start observing at time zero and we're looking at forward but we might want to find out what happened one second ago also but that i looked at the answer book and it doesn't seem that that's not what they wanted us to find so then we find the acceleration at one second and then we use that formula which is the, 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 that which is six times t so I have 6 times 1, which is 6 meters per second squared. So we're trying to find the acceleration when the velocity is 0, and the velocity is 0 at 1 second. But you could also look at the, the negative one, but the answer in the back of the book is just, is just 6. But you could easily put a negative 1 and get negative 6, which is what happened 1 second before we first started the deciding counting this problem or counting, we had a time zero, which is when we first started, maybe an arbitrary point in time. Okay, so there we have that problem. Looks like we're done.